Gemini singles, welcome. Gemini super singles, totally and completely singles. Welcome to the singles read. Meet the soulmate. We're going to meet your soulmate. And we're using the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot um, to do it. And this is an always positive read. Supposed to be uh, up uh, on Tuesdays. However, I've been kind of trying not to die this week. And, and uh, at least partially succeeding. Um, so I got behind. So forgive me. Uh, but uh, we'll call this the time frame mid-October. Uh, and I say this is always positive because what I do here is simply ask, you know, who is the one right for you, you know? Not your next ex-problem, not your next ex-husband, ex-wife, but spirit, can you tell us now in the name of light and love, so that serves our greatest good, surrounded in love and light, I say with the candle burning today, thank you, spirit, um, that we, we get a, a true vision you know, of who your person is. I typically pull personality uh, behavior, um, psychology, uh, personal history. Um, I, I tend to see um, the moon sign, um, the sun, sometimes Mercury, usually then Venus and Mars. Um, and we get some idea of maybe what they do for a living. Um, I want, I think this is someone you haven't met. Um, it's like, um, this is for people I say are super and completely sane. I would say it's like, it probably you haven't even had a clear one runway you've been busy with work or busy with other people but now you're in this place where the runway's clear and you can receive your soulmate and think oh thank god i gotta really like to get to the uh, uh, ground and they come down and land and we're going to meet them and uh this is a different kind of read so say it's not negative so if you see a three sword nobody's breaking up with you um now we may get a glimpse into their romantic history, and we'll look at their, but I'm looking at their core personality and behavior. So um, we look also at the four pillars. So first I'll look at emotional uh, energy with two cards. We get the moon, and then at the intellectual energy with two cards. And then we'll look at the sexual, the fun part, and the romantic energy. I want to call it lifestyle and core, core values. And that's the four pillars, I think, of a good relationship. So by the time I'm done, you know, I think we'll have a good bead on who uh, your person is, at least to the point where you'll be able to, um, you know, um, I shuffle, I already pre-shuffle, I'm going to shuffle a little bit because I saw, I don't like to see the bottom of the deck. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll be able to tell who they are if you're texting with them or something, definitely on, on a first date. I would kind of, I think, I often think about this as a first date with them where I'm kind of getting to know them and sometimes I really like them. I was going to take both of these because they really wanted to come out. And it came out like that. So we're going to start. It's a hell of a start, guys. The High Priestess and the Sun. Your soulmate is Jesus Christ or Buddha, maybe. Kind of not kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm a little in awe. Like, and that popped out, guys. Things been happening. It's cool. <laughs> Um, but, um, wow, <laughs> thank you, spirit. Um, well, you talk about a good childhood. Um, this person, um, I, I'm, it's hard for me to, uh, their parents may be like, uh, I'm betraying a little bit my prejudice. Like what is the most, I'm my mind. Okay. I'm, so it's an analogy. What's like the most spiritual person? Well, to me, be like a Zen Buddhist. It's like a Zen master. As I told my girlfriend a little while ago, living with you is like living with a Zen master. It's amazing energy. I see what it's like to be really love yourself and care about yourself and just move with such grace and and, uh, and groundedness, you know. Uh, it's, it's like that. Like they might have... <laughs> You know, um, very like spirit, and I'm not talking about they were running the freaking. I'm gonna disparage. I'm not talking about this a low level type of anything religion. Just say any religion where you're just shuffling for money, and I mean these people were spiritual people. You know, uh, if you know the, about the Essenes, you know, um, if, if the story of Jesus is true, I'll say if and leave it there. Uh, but uh, they uh, they knew they were going to receive Jesus. 
and uh, where it seems uh, the, the mother and Joseph, Mary and Joseph, uh, so, you know, they were prepared and they had the highest uh, insight. I mean, the high priestess and then the son. This is a very special person. I'm going to tell you like this. I mean, I'll, I'll kid aside. I mean, it's not Jesus. I get it. But, you know, this person, you you don't come packaged like this for no, well, we don't any come for no, nobody comes for no reason Mercury retrograde. I'm tired. It's hard. But this person, it, this person could be a person that's a crystal child, light child. They could be somebody younger, could be someone older. But this person would have been like enlightened. Maybe this person had a memory recall as a child, which is not that uncommon, of past lives. Maybe they were talking to spirits and my little friends. But maybe with this person, it never stopped. Usually, age of region, you know, the cranium hardens. You know, when you ask them a while later, you remember, I don't remember any of that. Mom. What are you talking about? This person remembers. This may be like a person just like they may just have almost like full access to their past lives of the Ak Akashic records. I've never done it. I've done over 700 readings. A little fucking embarrassing because I only got like 840 subscribers, some subscribers. And I'm thinking to myself, dear God, man, I'm prepared to just go however far I got to go to make this work. And I said, but that's just going to be humiliating if the number of uh, readers becomes greater than the number of subscribers. So please do subscribe. <laughs> it will be, I'll just keep going, fuck it, but it would be a little uh, humiliating. But wow, um, this person is, uh, let's go on, but I'm just going to want to stop there. Like I said, to me, it's like I'm meeting someone. And I'm, I'm like in awe of this person. High Priestess Pisces Moon. Oh, girlfriend's got a Pisces Moon. Kind of a little bit reminds me of it. <laughs> you know, uh, just this would be someone who, we'll see how it goes here. I'm thinking they're going to be just kind of loving and in a way. And you're not glowing or anything. But I think if you're around them, get to know them. Even anybody would have to just like their energy and... Uh, feel good around them, you know. Jeez, let's just go on with the major Kana with this person. The Wheel of Fortune's in the intellectual position now. Above, I kind of do conscious, and below can be unconscious energy. Here we're going to see the sun. That's Jupiter, guys. Wheel of Fortune and the magician. Mercury, Gemini. The Wheel of Fortune, Jupiter. We know we got a Pisces moon. That's a lock. The sun. The Pisces moon is most likely in the fifth house. Help me out. I'm trying to think of what that would make the rising. But I'm not good. It's not hard. But I'll put it up in the links. Like what that would make the rising. I usually don't pull the rising. But I got a feeling like this moon's in the fifth house. So... You know, if you know any Leo moons, um, they're very bright, very bright personality. It's a bright moon, the Leo moon. Uh, fixed fire, see? So uh, with their Pisces there, it wants to be a Pisces moon, a very powerful moon, of course, very emotional. Um, but in the fifth house, you know, it, it has to express itself. It's like being in someone's house, they make you take your shoes off. Well, if you like to wear your shoes in the house, Kind of fuck because now you gotta take shoes off, you know. <laughs> so you're Pisces in the fifth house. In the fifth house is like you know, put a smile, turn that frown upside down. It's fun. It's play. It's children. It's creativity. It's fun sex. It's romantic energy. Romantic sex. Um, Light-hearted, not uh, the eighth house stuff that I like. You know, ride or die, uh, soul type of sex. Um, so what a, a pull. What an interesting, I can just, you can really just Google <laughs> Pisces moon in the fifth house. You'll probably get something or even YouTube now. I, mean, I could go on and off, but it, it, I'm sure there'll be interpretations for that. It'll be like I'm saying. So, I mean, you're going to get out of this now with the wheel of fortune. And <laughs> oh, Major Kana, we're halfway through the read. I mean, they need to tell me. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. I'll be honest with you, the darkness lifted today. It was crazy. I wouldn't have done it. It wasn't good. I've been sick as hell, but not that darkness. 
And wow, here come this is a light worker, a light person, it's a very, very high vibrational person. Please, when you find this person, send me a link, introduce me, possibly yeah, friend me on Facebook, go like talk, get to know uh, this person and you. I mean, this is your soulmate, you know, how it is. I'm trying to roll with this with the Wheel of Fortune. It certainly is speaking Jupiter here. And, you know, I've got to go then with Sagittarius um, and the Magician here is Mercury. It's not going to be in Virgo, that's for sure. It's I got a feeling though it could be a Leo sun, honestly, and that would put the Mercury in Virgo, which works for the magician, to me. Um, exalted Mercury's exalted, you know, in Virgo. And so this would be someone that has a great mind. So I'm going to go with Leo here. It's how I'm feeling. Um, and, you know, Leo's the high, Cancer and Leo, it's a high part of the sea's northern hemisphere. Um, it's the highest energy, the energy of summer. Everything's alive, everything's growing, everything's thriving. Right? They've been going for months thriving, going, going. The rains are there, the, you know, hopefully. It's a high cotton, you know, um, and that's the energy here, the Wheel of Fortune and Jupiter. I just feel like it's going to be a Leo person here. Um, they may have their son in the ninth house, Leo's son in the ninth house. I have to think about that, how that works. I, 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 sorry, I can't hold my feet. I'm trying to think if that works. Um, or just could be can, their son's conjunct Jupiter, trine Jupiter, sextile trines, and sextiles are the best things, and they often line up like this. To, that's why everybody thinks astrology is bullshit, because it's like, you don't act like a Leo. That's not, not, it can't be true. You act like a cancer person, you know, because they're cancer dominant. But they have a Leo son, not saying this one is, but as an example. Uh, but this person, man, and I think, like, you would have to say that they, I get this feeling with Jupiter, they really have a way of just, like, achieving things. And their mind, it, it reminds me of a Sagittarius Mercury, too, because I think that they can make leaps of uh, perception and they can make connections mentally um and with them i mean who knows psychically they could just make connections that other people are not going to make guys i'm gonna tell you they could be channeling someone here this person's like channeling i'm talking about now normally what i'm saying is like just making intellectual connections and real deep insightful philosophical maybe really 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 smart heavy connections that other people might even find hard to get their mind around but this might even go beyond that. Like they're making connections with the galactic center or whatever. You know, um, I welcome anything in the name of light and love that serves the highest good. I think we need all the help we can get. I think it's time. Um, get in the game. Sexually, ten of wands. Sexually and romantically, five of wands. Remember, this is your person, okay? That are going to be right for you. I'm going to think about that a minute and get back to the sexy part, guys. This is the core values, seven of pentacles. Core values, and this is their lifestyle, queen of wands. Wow. Compartmentalization, compartmentalization. This person compartmentalizes... Uh, their moon and sun cell from their sexual, this is kind of unusual, uh, their kind of sexual uh, world self, 10th house, this last column kind of 10th house stuff, you know, public image, you know, career, um, that kind of thing. But also comes into me the core values. Do you believe in God, not believe in God, want children, not want children, think it's okay to lie, think it's not okay. Those core, core values that are usually like no deal, you know, deal breakers. If they're not aligned, and we're always looking for aligned. This person here, I mean, um, it would be hard to align with them, you know. He would want to, I think. Try to think of how this works. Usually this first emotional area will connect to the sexual area. And then the intellectual connects to here, the, the you know, 10th um, house. So, sexually... 
Hey, you've got a lot of fire here. It's hard for me to not see this. If I'm going to go with Leo, that they also have a Leo Venus and a Leo Mars. So I think this person could could have the Virgo Mercury, and they have a Leo Sun, and they have a Leo Mars, and a Leo uh, Venus. And I think they could all be in a conjunction, you know. And yeah, to me, like three planets, especially the Sun, two personal planets together, that's a conjunction. If they're in the same sign, you know, I mean, conjunction function, what's your, I mean, you know, you read it like that. They're all going to be working there pretty good. It's no matter how close they're working. What really matters with conjunctions is the aspects they make. Because a close conjunction, you have an aspect to another planet. Well, now it's, a, now it's within the orb of everything in that conjunction. And I think it kind of drags in. If it hits anything close, it drags an old conjunction. But if it kind of hits everything in the middle where everything's there within six degrees orb, then it gets really strong, in my opinion, particularly as it aspects something natal and then your whole life and transits. And so anything Leo, 8-8 uh, eight, eight Lionsgate, might have been huge for this person. Huge, huge for me. So this year, huge for everybody. Boom, something amazing. You know, this Wheel of Fortune... It's hard to not see that. They make their own luck, man. You know, somebody said, you know, Sagittarius is the luckiest sign in the world. Well, we're not lucky. We just get up and do it again. You know, we don't, like, give up. We shake ourselves off. We do. And I think this is kind of like what we're dealing with here. Um, they're, they've just, it's like they're not even confident. They just kind of are. They're, like, in their little Zen world. And it's like they just go and do what they got to do. They don't worry about how they look in these shorts. They don't worry about, oh, was that the right thing to say? I wonder if I hurt their feelings or, you know, they don't worry about anything. They don't worry. They don't, they don't, you know, a bit mysterious. Look at this picture, guys. It's intuitively Obi-Wan Kenobi shit here going on. Seriously, I have seen anything like this. So all major kind of here. You see the separation over here and over here is all, you know, minor Connor with the queen uh, card here. Um, so, um, I'm going to tell you something here. They have this compartmentalization of their life for a reason. And I believe this person is incredibly intelligent. And I believe, like, they probably learned early on. They probably did talk to dead people and everything, I'm just saying. And however it rolls. And so, they learned how to control their mind. And they probably have, in, in their astrology, powerful eighth house. I've worked with a lot of psychics in here. Usually the 8th house is what's prominent the most, not the 12th. Um, but this person, Gemini, um, they've learned how to really control their mind. They have to. Pisces moon. Even just forget all this other crazy stuff with your Jesus Christ person here. But uh, just a Pisces moon is empathic as hell usually. And they often then will find a way to protect themselves. They get older because they get tired of being hurt all the time. You know, by being a sponge around a bunch of negative, crazy, mean, whatever people that you might encounter. Sometimes it's energy vampires and stuff, and you're the place sucking it up, and it's miserable. Well, this person take, takes that all to another level, and they may have, had, they may have been taught, you know, uh, by parents who, who are spiritually advanced people, and how to handle their powers, guys. I'm telling you, it's amazing. And so this is how they've compartment. I don't exactly understand it. I mean, your IQ's popping. Freaking chart, too. Let's throw that in there. Um, I don't know about money here. I think they're doing fine. I personally, I don't think they worry <laughs> about, you know. But, you know, sexually, it's interesting to me. With all that Leo energy. And then you've got the Queen of Wands over here. This is in the core values. I tell you what this person values, and then you have the seven of pentacles, and they take this very seriously. They've thought about it very seriously. They've thought about everything they've done, even with their mind, the way they've compartmentalized their life, and the way they can they can protect themselves so they're not a sponge all the time. They're not they don't have this there's an off button and an on button. And they can sit, whatever they do, and they can say come and they come, and they can say enough, and then they go respect so they've thought about this every which way very practically they're not it's not pine sky it's not crazy person uh -uh. Huh. queen queen of wands as someone man or woman 
that's uh, very outspoken, but in a very uh, nice way that's kind of fun and engaging and charming maybe, you know? Um, and that they bring into the bedroom. Um, and I think this Pisces moon, if that's what I'm right, it's in the fifth house. Um, this is like, they, they probably do some kinky stuff in the bedroom and, but they have, I haven't seen this in a while and I love it. You know, they have this uh, fiery passion. This person, don't get me wrong. They're not like, uh, so spiritual. They don't have sex by the time you guys hit the bedroom door and by the time the door closes if it does your clothes are off and you're pregnant and you didn't hit the bed yet and i mean it's on fire i think they're going to find that they're on fire and i think with this 10 up there you know venus i think is more the 10 of wands uh the five of wands here uh, the mars uh, energy uh, that um and i think what this means with the venus venus and leo you know, they, they, uh, they like somebody they can kind of admire. So with sexually, they, they really don't want someone that's real submissive. They want someone that come just saying, if this is your right person to happen anyway, last thing we're all is, oh my God, I'm submissive. This is not going to work for me, you know, but maybe you haven't met this person. Cause I think if they kissed me, I'm not even gay. There was a dude, I'm, I might get pretty fired up myself. I mean, this is this would be just powerful energy here, guys. Seriously, um, and I just think it might be a little surprising because it's got a feeling like it's not how you're gonna feel them like until you make love, and it, they're gonna like uh, like just like transform and be really fast and really hot. And it's like if you're not afraid, you know, you're so mean. I'm not saying you're not afraid because it's almost it feels a little bit like an animal attack. So they take all of this power that they have a lot of power and, you know a magician that's why i say I don't, I don't know what they're doing but they ain't never hurting for anything they can create anything they want they got the magician and they got the wheel of fortune over the magician it's like the wheel of fortune jupiter so jupiter just keep handing the magician whatever it needs uh you know genie bottles you know they give one wish maybe and then magician's like oh need another genie bottle need another wish granted jupiter's like here here you go here's one you know um it's an amazing positive read um, and as to what they do, you know, um, really with the Queen of Wands, uh, they're like a, a Gemini, like some kind of um, really engaging uh, speaker, uh, writer, uh, cinema. Uh, they do their, uh, who knows what this person, you know, a healer of some kind, psychic of some kind. I got I got the feeling with the this card, uh, they're have been for a while and maybe someone could be known certainly like within in a niche or in a community someone that's well known jim and i wow i'm tired from that yeah i've been really sick and it's like i've been trying to get caught up on reading so i just really want to do some more today but i feel like that was okay i'll post it but holy shit this is the most amazing reading i've ever done in my whole life please let me know what you think of this jim and I. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. It really would help. Thank you, guys.